So I can't say that I get inspired <clears throat> all too often, but I definitely got inspired with this superstition trip. So I needed to commemorate this in some way, shape, or form. So I've decided I'm going to paint on an Altoids tin, which I've primered. And I'm going to do some typography here based on some old Sanborn maps. I think I'm saying that right. So that's going to be fun. Um, so flip this around. Have ourselves a little small painting. I use the the red because it reminds me of the the red of the mountains. So here's the concept. Uh, using relatively few paints, I'm going to be using these pigment paints. Gouache. I'm always going to pronounce that wrong. I, I say it right on off tape, but I am using those for pigments, but sometimes things get a little bit outside of pigment, so I am getting this obnoxious. Obnoxious, just, I don't know if it's a red or an orange, it's just right there in between and it's great. It's very, it's vibrant. So the goal here was, is I took a small picture, generic picture of the superstitions and got it to a size where I could get the shape of those mountains. And then using that, I kind of made my own way. And so I've kind of simulated another photo, which is totally fine. I'm here to commemorate and learn how to paint this thing. So that's where we're at. So I'm going to experiment with pigments and see what kind of color toning we can get. And I am going to make this pencil drawing, which was done with these great pencils. Uh, gives me a good idea of sort of the pigments I want to use and then go forward. But I would like to say that this is so exciting to me because I haven't been able to do this in so long and I haven't been inspired like I have been lately to do this. So this is like super exciting. Thing. Yikes, so Mike, so sit some fats and do your thing. It's episode eight, the Backpackers Art Kit. It's the Backpackers Art Kit. What the heck was that? I don't even know. Doesn't matter, we're here to look at backpacking art kits and the evolution of those. This episode, episode eight, is an impromptu episode, Popeye. Meaning, I didn't have this planned. This thing emerged over the weekend, and it was awesome, completely awesome. I, I, I'm not gonna call it a curse, but I've had artist block since like a long time. And to finally just have a breakthrough where it just feels good, been having minor ones, but this one finally just was kind of over the top. And I was able to produce a little proof of concept in less than 24 hours using the supplies in front of you. This episode, I'm dedicating to three people. Number one, Sailor Jesse, artist. I'm going to throw his Instagram link up, whatever they call that. Yep, Instagram link. I'll throw that up. Sailor Jesse, he told me last time we spoke, and I loved it because it was, it was an awesome philosophical conversation. He's like very straightforward people either consuming or they're producing. And I love that. I want you to think about that. People are either consuming or producing. And it's true. It also reminds me that, you know, the river of creation is this flowing thing that keeps flowing. And if you can get into the mental meditative state, it's life bringing. And I think destruction is like a dam, you know, or, or something. So any way we can maximize our own creativity, we got to find that river. I'm going to share that with you guys. And I think if it comes from a place of peace and a place of safety, and you have to mentally get there regardless of your surroundings. And it's, it's difficult to do, but I've been working on practices to do that. And this is the outcome. So thank you, Sailor Jesse, for all your time that I've spent with you. It's hope to see you again sometime soon. Uh, second one, top-notch artist, but better human being, Justin. Dude. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, I'm going in camera. I'll throw up his Instagram after this, but this is it. This is that pigment I told you about. It is the wildest. Where's that camera? It is the wildest. It, it's insane. It's it, it's it's unnatural. This pigment is unnatural. But I found its brother. This is like the pink, luminous red. I found its brother, luminous orange, which I think is going to be better 
for this particular painting, but they're both just glowing sunset dynamite colors. Anyways, thank you, Justin. And I am taking your gradation. I, I, I've been trying to notice how that gradation occurs, and I, and I try to apply it a little bit with a, a different style of cloud. I'm not happy with my clouds right now, but thank you for being you. I'll get to the third artist at the end, but let's get into the art kit. So previously, you know, I've tried, I've tried numerous art kits on hikes, on trips, uh, to, to good effect. I'll get, uh, to good effect. I'll give one example. So, you know, this is, this is achieved with, uh, basically these colored pencils and that's Bierstadt. Okay. So that's cool. But this is heavy. I didn't even weigh this. This adds another few grams, ounces. So yeah, 2.75 ounces for that. So that puts us at uh, 14, you know, with the, you know, with some pencils. Take these heavy guys, these studio pencils, my favorite, these graphics gear uh, Pentels. These are great for studio work, but they're heavy. Three of these weigh. 2.25 ounces. So that's a little bulky, right? So that generation, the pencil idea, and, and truly you're limited to, I mean, I have a great variety of colors here. Don't get me wrong. I am not complaining. And I built a little color wheel, which has all of them. I went to the art store and filled in the ones that I don't have. So it's a comprehensive, good, good, I'd say, concept uh, set. But you know, it's, it's, it's way, it, it's limited, it weighs a lot. Um, you're not going to use all of it. You know, it's just, it's, it's bulky, things like that. So next generation, okay, well, further generation, I've gone through different ones. So this one is, is actually fun and, and, and is and simple. So concept would be instead of bringing out a canvas, if you want to do a flower or something, I did a little cutout so I can get the ridge line correct. But uh, if the idea is in the future, I bring a tin out, how would I paint it? So what would be the best way to do that? Now, I, I, I don't know the colors out there specifically. So we've, we've got to go in there with something that allows us to adapt and, and, and kind of have a broad range of colors. So that's where these guys, gouache, comes in. And it basically works much like your printer almost exactly like your printer would work with a three color black plus white. And so, yeah, you have your primaries, you have your <clears throat> primary magenta, primary cyan, primary yellow, and then you've got your gouache, black and white. And, and through these, you can basically create almost every color. So, Let's see what else we need and to do this. So we're gonna need a palette knife. I've had this since 94. And we're gonna need a brush. So this wasn't in the bag because I'm gonna to have to put a tube on it. But I'm just gonna use just one brush, um, script liner for this exercise and then X-Acto knife and then other things. So pencil sharpener, instead of using those big Pentels, you take one or two black wings in. And I like the black wings, they got these huge erasers. And the cool thing, big erasers. And the cool thing with that is, is you also have backup tinder for lighting fires if you need some dry wood. But also, because this is a backpacking video. Yeah, there's the pencil, but what I did is I put sole tinder in the tips of these so that you can also light fires with that. Now, all of that requires, and I have a separate video that I'll record, but all it takes is I just use a cardboard straw to protect the lead. This also protects the tip of the lead, but I cut it in half, shave off this, and then you've got yourself a nice cheap light utilitarian pencil holders for backpacking. So with these utilities, we're able, let's see what else, so yeah, let's give ourselves some help. 
and we'll be able to clean our palette knife. There's a razor blade. This spoke of briefly, it's uh, just kind of a grid system, but also waterproof. So if you want to take notes, uh, do sketches, this is perfect. Whatever, it's uh, got its other purpose. It's dual purpose, waterproof. And then we got our color grid chart. So as I spoke before, uh, we could take these primary colors and make all these tertiaries and secondaries, um, secondaries and tertiaries, and then mixes of those, um, which we've done. And so, oh yeah, and then the last thing we need is a water cup. This is my mini nesting water cup that works perfect for watercolors. And I won't drink out of that um, because these pigments have metals and chemicals and cadmium and weird stuff in them that uh, you probably don't want to digest. So I just leave that as my, my watercolor slash art, art cup for the trip and it's titanium and light. So this whole kit, um, sans this, is only 11.95 ounces, which is much more reasonable. And you can see with this proof of concept, I was able to gain <clears throat> or, or kind of conceptualize some of the colors here. Now here's how, and here's the fun part where, where the real, I, I, I think the, the art comes in is yes, I'm happy with this final uh, proof of concept. Uh, things I like about it. I like the contrast of, I really like this contrast, the warmth. I need to make it more hot. So I'm gonna make this pink more of an orange with that luminescent orange. The green's too heavy, the desert isn't that green, so I need to cool that down and lighten it up a bit uh, with a cooler color. Same with this orange, uh, it's more of a desert, this is too hot. So I'm gonna try to cool that down a little bit as well. Uh, I'm gonna darken the contrast. These, this underbrush was more of a blue-green gray. And so in doing this the first time here and, 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 and being happy with the result, I know that there's other contrasty and color uh, color ways that I can apply that would make the experience more balanced. Things that I do like though, also I like the gradation on the sunset. I think that's fun and I like the dimensional cloud effect. I need to clean it up through there, but it's almost as if it, it, it is a grid system that I kind of like spread out and then try to make the clouds fill in, but I think it opens up the expansiveness of, of the experience. Um, this sunset can be improved, but uh, overall I'm happy. I mean, it's three inches, so it, it, it's the form factor is great. But I took notes on this, and from those notes, we are gonna be then in a further episode, I'll do a whole tutorial on how we'll sketch this out and then <clears throat> do a studio job. This would be like the field version, and then we'll do a studio job uh, using pigments that I specify and pick out that uh, bring out really the, the, the color feel and, and, and the end product that I'm looking for. So uh, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, then I, I would really say tune in, like this is the time for you to subscribe. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna be doing the art video, but it'll probably be fairly soon. I've got a lot of review videos I'm gonna be doing. And now the, uh, third, the third artist that I want to dedicate this to is... My grandma, Mary Flansburg. She is the biggest inspiration for all of my painting. While both of my grandmothers were professional artists, Mary really, whew, she really uh, knocked it out of the park with some of her stuff and her friends still talk about it today. And yes, the family collects all of her work and I just couldn't think of a better way to wrap this up. But anyways, thank you so much, Grandma, for all of those years of teaching me this stuff. I'm just really thankful that you gave me the opportunity to do it. And I'm just glad I could reflect some of the most beautiful places in the earth um, through art so that other people can enjoy it and perhaps hopefully get inspired to do something similar because... When I'm out there, it's as if I feel so connected to that world. It's it's magical. So let's wrap up this uh, episode eight backpacking art kit um, with where we're at and and and, and the evolution. So I, I've I've moved away from pencils a while ago. I've tried different 
combinations here. I'm giving this gouache uh, a shot for a while, but here's the thing, we can really save space. We're not gonna use all this pigment on a four day, five day. So realistically, we could find smaller containers and just take in, you know, a smaller amount of this and not this entire, uh, you know, tube, which you don't need in total. The other benefit about these particular, this gouache, and I like it for the field, is because when you make your palette, you can rehydrate it. So it's, a, it's, it's like a watercolor, uh, you know, this watercolor tin type of paints. Uh, you can actually f see the pigmentation. I love it. The, the gou gouache is just amazing for that. You can do your your light watercolor type effects, but you can also do like heavy pigment, which watercolors can't do. Where you know, no matter how much you add, you can always there's a translucent property to them. So this is kind of a great medium layer. And again, because we can create most of you know the realistic pat you know uh, color palettes. Uh, we won't get the fringe great colors. Like we won't get a crazy cadmium orange. We won't get crazy, uh, you know, purples. Some of these colors require certain chemical compositions that can only be made with that composition. And that's why some pigments are extremely expensive. Uh, some of them contain metals, some of them contain trace metals, some of them contain gold, uh, depending on what it is. Um, think of that Clint Desarens and stuff. But anyways, all these different uh, types of paint have different properties. Now, this other type of gouache is more of an acrylic. It's made by the same company, but this has much, it's much more fun. You can't see the individual like flakes and stuff as with this, where it's like granular, but what you will see is it flows really well and it's super pigmented, which I like. But again, that's not good for the field because you end up carrying a sack of paints because they're all specialty paints, right? And so that's the benefit of, of this kind of color system. So I think from a backpacker's perspective, we're going to even micronize further and figure out how to just get, uh, I, I know someone out there is already saying, yeah, an eyeglass, uh, you know, what do you call those? Uh, contact lens case might work. And that actually might work. It gives us just what we need. So that might be the solution off the top of my head, but we'll look at other things. Maybe there's alternatives to that, but that would further micronize our kit and lighten it up a bit, but still give us the properties that we want. Now, here's the downside. We don't have anything really, I have to bring in a piece of paper or something. That's fine um, to act as a uh, uh, palette of sorts. So blending palette or whatever, artist palette. Mistakes are made, who cares? Move on, let's get to the important stuff. So yeah, this, this episode dedicated, last but not least, to my grandmother. And the thing that she used to always say when you'd leave a, her house, especially if with your wife or your companion or whatever, she'd grab you both by the hands and she'd look in the eye and she'd say, love one another. And I always thought that was super cool. And so I'm adapting that to my, my uh, channel here. And because it's a survivalist slash backpacking slash inspiration channel, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you flat out. I'm going to adopt it, adapt that just a little bit. It's rough out there. Love one another. See you soon.